I'm going to take a look at my EP1 program that I use and why even though the software that came with it is for Windows it's actually easy to use it with Linux as well. So the actual EP1 program itself has a socket over here and uh, it can take various sizes of EPROMs. Uh, and it's made by a company called Art, and it's no longer available. Uh, this was made back in the late 90s. I think it said it on this website it became obsolete in 2004 or something. Uh, it's EPP2. And this is the interesting bit on top here. It actually uh, gives some instructions on how to use it in a terminal, which is why I don't actually need to use the Windows software which came with it. I can actually use it on Linux with the terminal itself. Uh, it's RS232, so it's up to 19... 200 bode uh, plug straight into the mains adapter made in the Netherlands. I think it's a fantastic device I've never had any issues uh, or any reason to require a different programmer All it has on the outside is the LED to show when the power is on so This is what I'm currently using it for so this is my uh, Z80 project. It's what I call my Nomad 80 computer uh, and I use it for a boot ROM here and uh, this boot ROM is 8 but 8 bits by a 64K, so it's, it covers the full address space of the, uh, the Z80 processor. And I just, uh, when I start up the computer, I just copy it, what, the contents of the EEPROM into the RAM. Uh, and then I start executing the programs in RAM. So it doesn't actually, not use as a conventional EEPROM in a computer. It's just used as a kind of a booting device. So on the right here, this is a traditional kind of EEPROM, which I'd use a program for. So this is a Toshiba one, uh, and it even says what the programming voltage is on, on this actual device, 12.5 volts. So it can vary from device to, vo to device, and the programming uh, method can vary from device to device as well. Uh, also, it's, it, so it tells you what the size is, 27512, so that's 512 divided by 8, which is um, 64K. And I think the, the bit on the end here, the 20, is uh, the programming speed, which is, I think it's 20 nanoseconds. Uh, but on the right, I've got this, which is quite a, kind of a modern device, which is a uh, an EE prom, an E squared prom, which is electrically erasable prom. So this one, you need a UV light to shine through this window, uh, and you erase the device like that. It takes about five minutes to do that device, whereas this one, it can be erased f f uh, through putting a specific combination of um, voltages on the pins, and. Uh, and then it just takes a fraction of a second. I think it was something like 100 nanoseconds or something. It's very, very quick to um, to actually erase this one. But it's the same size. It's a 27C. So it's the same kind of naming of the device, 512. So exactly the same. Uh, but it says 45Z. Now, I can't, I'm not sure if that's the actual speed of this device or not. Um, but it's actually uh, very handy to use these because if I'm developing code, it, it won't rather than spend five minutes erasing a code each time I want to try a code on my actual device, I can actually erase this in a few nanoseconds and uh, reprogram it. I can actually program this in the same way I program this one on my actual uh, EEPROM programmer, even though my EEPROM programmer is over two decades old. So this is the EEPROM eraser that I use. And uh, again, it's kind of similar style case to the other, to my programmer, which is good. Uh, it's got a warning on top. You need to um, keep the lid shut when it's actually in operation. So you open up the lid and in there there's a UV tube. Uh, and that, you put these devices face down over that gap. And you can put several of them in the row. So you can raise up a bunch of them in the, at the same time. Uh, but then you close the lid before you actually start it. And on the on the end you can change the, the timing. And I think it's about five minutes I've got it set to, which is like a very short time on this dial but as the uv tube inside gets older it takes longer and longer to actually erase them so you probably have to start making the time of the erasing time uh, much longer as the as the tube wears out and you just uh, press the start button and uh, there's that led there which lights up and after the timing's timed out and the uv uh, lamp inside has gone out that led lights up to tell you that you can actually take the devices out the device is a little bit warm when you take them out as well because it produces a fair amount of power. Uh, and on the other end, it's just like powered off of 12 volts DC. It's got a grounding point as well. Uh, so I probably still use these 
older devices because I've got a bunch of them anyway um, and they're more kind of retro feel type thing if you've got one plugged in your project it kind of feels more retro I use the EEPROM e squared PROMs to um, actually develop code uh, and then actually use this uh, the original devices uh, when I want to actually use release device uh, release code on my actual projects that actually leaves me with a bit of an issue because I've got a a razor that I can erase these EEPROMs in but I can't use it to erase these, these because you can't erase these with the ultraviolet light you can only do it electrically and my programmer actually won't erase this either it doesn't have a facility to do that I'm sure that modern programmers probably do cater for these electrically erasable ROMs and uh, will allow you to erase them so I had to just look at the data sheet see how uh, you actually erase them and actually just put together a simple circuit to do that and you need 14 volts to do that. So I've got a boost converter which boosts up my input voltage to 14 volts. They've got a 5 volt regulator because you need to power it at the normal 5 volts. And these capacitors are just for the regulator for stability. I've got two buttons. So one is to allow the power through to these, um, the actual socket. So without the buttons pressed, it doesn't power the actual device. But when I do that, it powers it up with 5 volts but leaves it in a, the chip in a state where it's just like stable and then I've got another button down here so I'm holding down the power button I just just have to press that once and it will erase the device and it erases it instantly basically so it's a lot quicker to actually erase these devices and uh, a lot simpler as well I just have to power um, put some power in here and because this is a boost converter uh, it can be anything from like four volts upwards to I think the the well, until up because it's only a boost convert up to 14 volts, uh, but you wouldn't want to go all the way to 14 volts. So, say between 4 volts and 10 volts, I can or 12 volts, I could probably put in there without a problem. So, first of all, I'll just use the terminal um, emulator to access the programmer, uh, just to go issue a couple of commands to show how easy it is to use it through the terminal. So, if I go sudo minicom dev. Uh, TTY USB 0. If I hit enter, it comes up with the command prompt back from the uh, actual EPROM programmer, and I can type G and hit return. Now, that's just a command which gives me the status of the actual EPROM programmer and um, it gives me the, any error codes and other information. And if I type S and return, that gives me the current device configuration for the device in the actual um, EPROM programmer, uh, and that's the E squared prom that I have and that's plugged in there and this is device only configured because I've run other commands on it when you start the EPROM program it comes up with a blank device and so it expects you to enter all the information uh, but I'll show you those commands when we go into the actual um, into the actual software itself and uh, take a look at that so if I do a directory listing of my project directory so at the bottom you can see the stuff I've been looking at um, most recently uh, and here I've got the actual, so when I uh, assemble my assembly code for my project, it, um, acute, I've got a program which accumulates it all into a single ROM image, which is a, a 64K uh, image. So I, I fill up the entire ROM with uh, the project that I'm actually working on. And uh, I've added a couple of things down here. So I've got this bin to Motorola. So when you actually send data to the EEPROM program it needs to be in a, a hex file a, an ASCII hex file format which is a Motorola format now I'm used to using the Intel one because that seems to be quite common but this um, program uses the Motorola one so if I take a look at this which is the output of a file so this is the execute the compiled version of that program and I pass the ROM image into this program and it produces this hex output so if I just take a look at some of this file and this is the actual Motorola format. So the format is at the beginning, it identifies which version of the Motorola format that it's actually using in this file, so S3. Uh, and then the next um, uh, byte of information, which is these all hex, hex bytes, uh, is the number of bytes of data within this row. But that's not just the data, it includes the checksum as well and the address, uh, because the next um, information is the actual address so this is the actual start address so this is the next on the next line the next where where the start address of this line of data is and you can see it's going up um, in hex 20s uh, which is 32 bytes 
per line and then the, the actual data comes after the address data and it comes all the way across here up to the last oops up to the last byte and this last byte is a checksum at the end oops, there so that's the checksum byte and so it has a checksum byte on the end of each line so it goes through the entire ROM and it just breaks it down into these uh, hex um, hexadecimal ASCII rows of the rows of text which is the data in my ROM so if I go back to the data of the directory listing so that's that file there and that's the file which I'm going to pass into my other program which I've written which is it's just like a terminal program itself so like you saw when I used the terminal emulator earlier to send commands I've got a program which does a, seri a series of commands which I, I can use to actually issue empty checks or write, write data or read data or verify data and that's this program here e pp 2 progc so I've written it in C again uh, and I've compiled it, it comes out like that and if I run that oh, I did the wrong thing, right, okay so, uh, and it gives me the command line arguments uh, and so the first command line argument is the serial port so that's just um, for so dev tty usb 0 uh, and then I have the start address of the memory which I'm going to be looking at so if I just take a look at 0000 to 0200 you don't need the leading zeros actually you can just put in 0 to 200 um, uh, and then if I do an E which is an empty check I hit return it goes off and does a communication so the first thing it does is it sets the communication rate to 19200 now I've been using this program before so it detects that it's already in 19200 it doesn't have to do any handshaking to get down get from 9600 which is the default communication rate when you turn the power of the EPROM program on uh, so it doesn't have to do that every time it just it, so it recognizes now that I'm in 19200 already because I've already used it so it didn't have to do anything there uh, then it sets the device code, so this is the custom code which I've got for my squared prom. Uh, then it sets the start address, which is the zero, and then the, the end address. So each of these is so these are the commands L on the end of this end address thing. So it sends the actual uh, value zero two hundred and L to set the end address, and then offset address, and they just uh, ask the prom programmer to uh, report back all the things I've just um, sent. So that's the device code, the start address. The end address and the offset address don't don't really need to do that but just for my own diagnostics um, I do that and then this is the empty ch empty check command T and it says error so it's not empty because I've actually programmed this device already I'll go through an erase process and uh, I show show it erased as well and then at the end of each thing uh, each run of this command I'll just get back the status at the end and it shows there's an error there so if I do the same thing again, um, but if I if I actually read from 000 to 200, 0200, so that now it does exactly the same at the top. It just like does the communication setting and sets the range, and then it does the actual read command rather than doing the um, empty check command. And and the actual format that comes back from the programmer, like I say, is it recognizes the Motorola format, so it comes back in Motorola format lines. So I I could actually compare this to the actual text that I, the data I sent it and these lines should look exactly the same which which they do and uh, then at the bottom it's just got the status but what I'll do is I'll I'll now I've shown that um, that data in the actual ROM itself I'll erase the ROM and then we would check the data again to see that see that it's actually blank so here's my EPROM eraser which I showed earlier which I uh, put together I've got a battery on one side, which is this is just supplying eight about eight volts of um, power, and this is the device. And so to erase it, what we have to do is place it in there, push the arm down. Uh, so as soon as I press uh, there, I get power to it, and then I just temporarily hold down and release the uh, erase one, and then I can release the power as well. I can release power straight after I've pressed that, really, because it do, it does it in like hundred nanoseconds or something like that. Um, and so that's it erased. So now when I put it back in the actual programmer, we should find that the data in there is uh, is all gone. So I've put the uh, the device back in the EPROM programmer 
And if I just hit the up arrow to get the last command that I sent and do read exactly the same addresses again, it should all come back as empty. And so there it is.